This is truly unacceptable. As we forecasted earlier, Boeing Starliner continues with more delays. In today's episode of Alpha Tech, let's explore what has continued to happen with this embarrassing spacecraft. What have NASA and Boeing officials said about Starliner's issues? Have they provided any useful solutions, or are they just making excuses for their poor management? Why not swap the astronauts' return on the Dragon spacecraft? On June 18th, NASA and Boeing held what was considered to be the final review meeting for the first flight of the Starliner spacecraft. The meeting lasted over an hour, and despite the roundabout words from the officials, we can conclude that NASA and Boeing will need an additional four days to review all available data and performance of the Starliner spacecraft before allowing it to come back to Earth. This means the new schedule for SUNY Williams and Butch Wilmore, who arrived at the space station June 6th for an estimated week-long visit, will not come back before June 26th. Well, the schedule's been extended yet again. If you recall, Starliner also faced other delays on June 18th and June 22nd. Given the continuous postponed timelines, do you think Starliner will be able to bring the astronauts back to Earth on June 26th? To be honest, it's all just a bunch of maybes or potentially rather than anything certain. Just consider this. Even Steve Stitch, the manager of NASA's commercial crew program, mentioned in the press conference that there's still a possibility for Starliner to depart from the station on July 2nd, followed by additional departure windows occurring every four days. Kind of pathetic, really. I can't imagine how a giant that once revolutionized the aerospace industry like Boeing and even NASA could end up handling a spaceflight situation so ineptly and stubbornly. The Starliner spacecraft may have flaws, and I think that the larger issue lies with organizations like NASA and Boeing, who need to be held accountable for this. So what solutions did they propose for Starliner's issues during their press conference? First, the officials unanimously agreed that it wasn't a disappointment, but a learning experience. The four-day delay in the spacecraft's return will give our team a little bit more time to look at the data, do some analysis, and make sure we're really ready to come home, said Steve Stitch. Because of this, I feel they're being quite stubborn about the seriousness of Starliner's issues. Why not use the Dragon to bring the astronauts back to Earth? Why risk their lives by having them sit in a spacecraft with technical flaws? These questions have been constantly on my mind while following this mission, and I guess you might feel the same way. However, perhaps NASA and Boeing are still trying to salvage their reputation and secure Starliner or get the certification for the commercial crew transportation contract to the space station. NASA also attempted to address issues with five helium leaks and thruster problems on June 15th. The results showed that the helium leak rate inside Starliner service module was lower than the last time the vehicle was powered up. Stitch mentioned that testing of the reaction control system thrusters also went well. Four out of five thrusters operated normally, and they're expected to be ready to detach Starliner by the end of the month. But it must be said that stability and safety throughout testing are just one aspect, and we can't predict the more complex challenges that might arise in the future. Starliner could be in a precarious situation at any time in the vastness of space. The current troubles of Starliner indicate that Boeing's development team did not address all these issues before the crewed flight. This shows a lack of thorough testing, leading to long-term consequences for the Starliner spacecraft. Similar thruster issues, for example, were revealed during the spacecraft's 2022 uncrewed test flight. Stitch acknowledged that during a June 6 news conference that officials thought we had fixed that problem. But he added, I think we're missing something fundamental that's going on inside the thruster. Since the June 6 docking, NASA and Boeing officials have worked to review flight data and analyze the problems, a process that is still ongoing, Stitch said. It's possible that the thruster issues may be caused by overheating that affected how the thrusters fuel burned and as they fired rapidly during Starliner's rendezvous with the space station, he added. It's not clear what may have caused the helium leaks, though that problem could also be related to the thruster issues, officials said. In total, there are 28 reaction control thrusters on Starliner's service module and 12 on the Starliner vehicle itself, according to a Boeing fact sheet. When asked during the news briefing, Stitch did not say how many of those thrusters might fail before Starliner is deemed unsafe. Of the five service module thrusters that failed during flight, all but one have been recovered, officials said. So, why is it that only Boeing Starliner finds itself in this problematic situation, unlike any other company, especially when compared to a young private company like SpaceX? Elon Musk delivered a concise yet scathing critique, highlighting one of the numerous reasons behind this issue. Too many non-tactical managers at Boeing, he wrote. The SpaceX CEO places a high premium on leaders and managers who possess profound knowledge and expertise in the domains they operate within. 
I strongly believe that all managers in a technical area must be technically excellent. Managers in a software area must write great software, or it's like being a cavalry captain who can't ride a horse, he asserted. In contrast, Boeing does not adhere to this principle. Instead, it has enforced diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI, policies. DEI, at its core, serves as a positive purpose by promoting the representation and participation of diverse groups, including individuals of different ages, races, ethnicities, abilities, disabilities, genders, religions, and cultural orientations. However, at Boeing, this policy has strayed from its well-intentioned nature and descended into a toxic culture of nepotism. The promotion of incompetent individuals to highly specialized positions has led to a plummeting of standards in manufacturing and operational processes. The decline of Boeing and the concurrent meteoric rise of SpaceX has brought government officials back down to earth, as their once esteemed partner, renowned for safety and engineering excellence, effectively passed away over 27 years ago following a historic merger with McDonnell Douglas. Boeing, in its present state, is but a mere ghost of its former self. This explains why NASA is now wholly reliant on SpaceX to transport astronauts to the International Space Station, with 14 contracts awarded for the Crew Dragon. This situation appears to contradict the anti-monopoly ideology that NASA's long championed. That's why we can see how stubborn NASA is with Starliner. However, if given the choice, they'd still prioritize their own safety. On the other hand, they remain cautious that with the proven deficiencies on the Starliner, I think we're taking extra time, given that this is a crewed vehicle, and we want to make sure that we haven't left any stone unturned, Stitch said. This is the first crewed flight of this vehicle, funded by NASA to provide transportation services to the ISS. The goal is to facilitate regular flights carrying four astronauts to the space station every six months. The initial test flight, carrying NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, aims to collect data to certify the vehicle for operational missions. Boeing's first opportunity to conduct one of these operational missions is slated for early 2025, or potentially in February or March. NASA will soon need to decide whether to assign this slot to Starliner or SpaceX's Dragon for the Crew-10 mission, the 10th operational flight of NASA on the Dragon. Due to technical issues encountered during the current test flight, it appears likely that NASA will push Starliner's operational mission to the next available window, possibly in August or September of 2025. However, as Stitch mentioned on Tuesday, no decisions have been made, and NASA needs to analyze the results of this test flight. We haven't looked too much ahead to Starliner 1, he said. We've got to address the helium leaks. So we're not going to fly another mission like this with the helium leaks, and we've got to understand what the rendezvous profile is doing that's causing the thrusters to have low thrust and then be deselected by the flight control team. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.